I recently got requests from people for a solution to load shedding in South Africa. In this video, I'm going to show you how to beat load shedding. I will explain a way to keep your fridge running and lights on, even when there is no power. Plus, I will talk about how much it will cost to set this up. The solution won't be to use noisy generators. It also wouldn't use a solar generator that needs to be manually switched on. Load shedding can happen randomly, so it's best to be prepared for it whenever it happens. When you are at work, your fridge should still work so the food doesn't go bad. My solution solves this with an automatic transfer switch. The switching happens so fast that your computer will stay on during the switch. The solution doesn't require solar panels, but it does require an inverter charger and a battery. You can charge the battery when the grid is working and it will be discharged when the grid is down. You can use this to power your whole house or a few appliances, like your fridge and router. You can expand the battery and inverter capacity later. If you're not ready for a big system and can work without the fast transfer switch, I recommend looking at my budget UPS system without solar panels. The link to this video will be in the video description. If you want, you can add solar power to the system by using an AC coupled or DC coupled system, which I will talk about later in the video. The heart and brain of the system is the Victron MultiPlus 2, an inverter charger that will power your essential loads during load shedding or a power outage. This is a simplified diagram of the setup. I will explain how it works. What you can see here is a 48 volt server rack battery connected to a fuse and then to the MultiPlus inverter charger. Then there is a wire that goes out to an AC breaker box, which is called the critical loads panel. During normal operation, when the grid is working, the grid is connected to AC in. It will then charge the batteries. AC out 1 and 2 will be active. When load shedding happens, AC out 2 will turn off to prevent backfeeding into the grid. It is not allowed to feed electricity from your battery back into the grid to protect people who might be working on the power lines. Only AC out 1 will be powered during a power outage. The energy will not come from the grid, but from the battery. I recommend wiring your essential loads to the AC breaker box. This breaker box contains all the essential loads in your house, like the fridge, freezer, routers and a few lights. The AC breaker box should be equipped with a ground fault current interrupter. This is a safety measure that is required. After this, you can add your breakers. If you do not want to rewire your home, you can add a few sockets after the breaker for devices you want to power manually. I have the same system in my house that powers essential loads during a power outage. You might wonder how to connect the grid to the inverter charger. In this diagram, you can see that a normal breaker from the main breaker panel feeds the inverter charger. Remember to set a current limit on the charger. If you connect it to a 20 amp breaker in your main panel, then limit the maximum charging current to 15 amps in the MultiPlus software. You need an 80 amp class T or NH fuse and a 4 gauge or 25 mm square wire rated at 90 degrees Celsius. How did I calculate this? Check out my other videos where I go into detail about sizing fuses and wires. You can also find the wire size, breakers and fuses in the manual of the inverter charger. If you have a normal size fridge freezer, rated for 150 watts, with a duty cycle of 30%, which means that the compressor is on for 8 hours a day, it will use 1200 watt hours, while a 48 volt server rack battery has a capacity of 5000 watt hours. I have calculated my fridge average power consumption in another video. If you are interested in knowing the average over a week, go check it out after this one. If we divide the battery capacity by the fridge power consumption, we get 5000 watt hours divided by 1200 watt hours equals 4 days. The battery can power the fridge for 4 days, more than enough to bridge the time between load shedding. When the power from the grid is back on, 
it will start to charge the battery. Normally, the inverter will work right out of the box. However, if you want to use it to send power back to the grid, you need to do some configuration. We can do this by purchasing an MK3 USB device that connects to the computer. We can then configure the grid codes for the specified area you live in. I will do a separate video on this in the future. Let's analyze the cost of this system. A server rack battery will cost you about $1200. And you can expand this later. The Multiplus 2 48 volt 3000 VA will cost you about $800, including the MK3 USB, which is needed for programming. Wires, fuses, breakers and a breaker box will cost you about $300. The total cost of the system will be $2300 without installation costs. You can reduce the cost of the system by using a 12 volt battery and a 12 volt 2000 VA Multiplus. A 12 volt 200 amp hour battery costs $600 and the inverter $800. Wires, fuses, breakers and the breaker box will cost you $300 for a total price of $1,700. The larger system is not much different from the smaller system. I recommend the 48 volt system because it's easy to expand. Check my video about 12, 24 or 48 volt systems where I discuss the advantages and disadvantages of battery voltages in depth. There are three ways you can add solar power to the system. The first two are AC coupled and the third is called DC coupled. Let's start by talking about AC coupled systems. The AC coupled method is that a string inverter is connected to your main distribution board. The power goes to your loads or back to the grid. This is how most solar panels are wired, without battery backup. When the grid goes down, the string inverter also shuts down, in order to protect the people who might be working at the power lines. The second option is another AC coupled method, in which the string inverter outputs its power on the essential loads output of the inverter charger. This is only possible if the solar panel power is lower than the rating of the multiplus. If your multiplus is 3000 VA or 3 kW, your solar panel array can only have a maximum rating of 3 kW. Most solar arrays are larger than this, so it's not always possible. You can increase the size of the multiplus to 10 kW. The advantage of this is that the string inverter will not shut down when the grid is down. So your solar panels will still produce power to charge the battery when load shedding is happening. The third solution is a DC coupled system. The solar panels are connected to a charge controller, which will charge the battery directly. I recommend this setup if you don't have a string inverter yet. If you already have solar panels on your roof with a string inverter, then use one of the AC coupled methods. If you learned something new, a like on the video would be highly appreciated. Let me know your questions in the comments. Subscribe for more videos like this and watch these videos next.